everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to use the ArcDroid CNC machine for the first time. Got to bang out a simple project. We're going to bring you along. I wanted to quickly go over my setup here. This is a custom made table for the ArcDroid and the Hynade 80 amp plasma cutter. This unit has really impressed me and I believe it's rated all the way up to inch and a quarter material. This is an Eastwood plasma cutting table. I just went this route because it was quick and easy. And a custom made water bed. This is four inches and it just slides underneath the Eastwood table. As you can see, we've already been using it. It fires right up very quickly. Now we are going to hit the home button. I have this plastic Ziploc bag material over the front of my screen so I don't get any random sparks or dust on it. Now we can move this out, hit the zero button. I'm not really gonna go over the ins and outs of this. There are thousands of videos online, people setting these up and they know way more about it than I do. We're just gonna bang out this very simple foot pad project. As you can see, we already have our scribed marks on the 3 8 inch steel. We have our tracing stylus on. We are going to simply move our stylus to the desired location. We'll hit the trace button, go down here to holes. We already have our diameter set to 750 thousandths. We can adjust that simply with the hand wheel, or if we needed like 875 thousandths, we can type it in manually. The unit will break in 50,000 increments. So we need a three quarter inch hole, 750 thou. I'm gonna open that up just slightly by doing a center cut. I really wish the center cut would stay throughout. You have to adjust that each time. Okay, now we simply move on to our next spot. We need another three quarter inch hole. Adjust this to center cut because I want it slightly oversized. With center cut, in my experience, you get about a 16th inch over size. Center cut. another three quarter inch hole, center cut. Okay, now we have our part effectively drawn. Set this aside now. Okay, now we are going to exit out of this. If I can manipulate my fingers. Now, I'm not going to save this I'm going to simply exit out because I'm not going to do this exact part over and over and over. So now we need to go to tune. We're cutting three eighths of an inch steel. I went online and found a speed reference table. This is from Hypertherm and it has crossed over very, very nicely to the Hynade. It is a little goofy, like we have two fifths of an inch, one third of an inch. So you have to interpret that just a little bit, but I'm doing two-fifths of an inch, and that'll get us close enough. So what I need, I've already set my plasma cutter at 55 amps, 70 PSI, and then we slide all the way over to our inches per minute. We are going to go at 39 inches a minute. So we simply tap our feed, and it'll automatically highlight 39. There we go, 39 inches a minute, and now we can do our cut. We have polished our material to ensure that we get a good ground. I put a secondary clamp on my L square here to keep everything rigid. Now we're going to cut all four holes. The plasma cutter is set up at the proper amperage, 
and the uh, unit is all set and tuned to run at the correct speed. We should be able to cut now. I'm going to simply hit the run button. I also have my Z clear height set very high so I do not interfere with the ground. Takes longer to run the part, but we're only doing four pieces. Gave it a love tap with our ball peen hammer here because when you cut over a fin, sometimes you'll get some welding action. We have our parts cut. All of these are cut very well. I have one small spot that has been hanging up, so I upped my amperage there. Simple tap with the ball peen hammer. Has those come out. As you can see here, we are almost a sixteenth of an inch over, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we have our next part loaded. Because we're using this square, I can just make multiple parts. This is the simplest way for me to do it. I could have laid them all out and had the machine cut multiples all at once, but you run the chance of not having a good ground. So I like to do it this way. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast the hammer noise. I've got my father in the shop as well with us. We'll hit the run button. Gave the machine five more amps, hopefully to knock out that little tab that was holding in our slugs. Oh yeah, we're cooking now. next one, I'm going to remove this fin right here, and I think all of our slugs will drop right out. Simply set that aside. Got our second part made. Hit the run button and we're off to the races.
holding this edge just to make sure our part doesn't tip. If you were with lighter sheet metal, this would be more of a consideration. Again, we keep that Z clear height so that we can jump over our ground. Drop the slug in. Now we're going to switch to our last part. Parts are really coming out quickly. So much faster than setting up the old iron worker or drilling them. For not a lot of money, it can run, bring your shop into the next century. We're on our fourth and final part. We'll watch that, then we'll wrap up the video. Fourth and final part is done. Here is a look at our finished product. You can see we have not perfect holes, but for me doing, I think my third project with the machine, definitely getting better. Really ups your game. You're really able to knock parts out in a very quick fashion. These, I believe, 8x8 eight eight square plates came cut from the steel yard this way. Then all we had to do was bang the holes into them. I haven't seen a lot of guys talk about using a squaring arm or some kind of locating apparatus to make multiple parts. With a cut bed this small, I think you would have really struggled to do 8x8 eight eight square and shoot all of the holes in one shooting match. I think it could be done, but... I chose not to. I like this way, works for me. The Arc Droid, there is a little bit of a buy-in, a small, small learning curve, of which I am not even qualified to talk about the electronic sides of it, but this is a nice setup, works well for our shop. The Hynade really continues to impress me. Our Hypertherm PowerMax 30 Air ended up actually getting stolen so that's unfortunate. I may replace it with a 80 amp machine and just tote an air compressor on job sites because it would really be nice to be able to cut up to one inch thick. This machine will do it. I think that will wrap up this portion of the video. I did want to mention I would spring for the machine torch there is nothing more cheesy than standing here holding the handheld torch. I know you can do certain things. I know Andrew in the videos, he just drapes it over like a uh, roller from Home Depot. All great options, but if you're in a production shop and you have a tool like this, you need to be doing production. The user interface is really awesome, very intuitive. I can't wait to train my guys on it. I will say I think it's a little fragile just having this internet cable here and a exposed thumb drive. I'd love to see something more robust, but it appears to be working and I haven't had any issues yet. 
I hope you enjoyed this adventure using the ArcDroid CNC machine in the real world. If you would, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and share the videos on your social media platform. That really helps out the channel. I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time.